want to apologize ahead of time, but we just had a uh, brewery line auction finished. I'll be as polite as I could be. <laughs> nice. Set nice. the bar low, please. Lower the bar. That's right. Um, and everybody, it, um, I'm going to be sharing my screen in just a couple minutes. But um, when we come back, we will have a time for everybody to introduce yourselves. Um, so when we do that, we'll come back. And I encourage you at that point to do like a, a, a gallery view um, instead of a speaker view. So you can kind of see everybody. Or you could do a speaker view and then the person speaking will kind of take over your screen and dominate your screen. But um, either way, but like I said, just in about another one or two minutes, we'll get started and, um, and I will share my screen at that point. Brett, did you see one of the competitor, my competitors is doing Hacienda de Vega? No, I did not. Yeah. I'm going to use that money to buy some advertising from you guys, okay? <laughs> money has to flow. Money has to flow. Money has to flow, that's for sure. It's about as handsome as you are. It's about the Quan, Brett. <laughs> you got to show me the Quan. I'll show you the Quan. <laughs> Indeed. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Um, Kathy, go ahead and... Um, Put everybody on mute and I will get started. Um, here. Come on, there we go. All right, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Brett Schonsenbach and I am the CEO, President and CEO of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. And what we are going to cover today, <clears throat> we are going to talk about what is a Chamber of Commerce, why businesses join, and how do chambers benefit the community. So jumping right into it, what is a chamber? A chamber is a nonprofit membership organization. We're not a 501c3, a charity, but we are a nonprofit organization. We are not part of city government. Those of us who work for chambers get that question all the time. People think that um, we are you know, hosted at the city hall, at city hall um, and that's where our offices are based and things like that. No, we are separate, a separate entity completely from city government. We were established at the Carlsbad Chamber in 1923. So those of you who happen to know your uh, Carlsbad history will note that um, that is, uh, I think, 30 years before Carlsbad was even um, a city. And Kathy, I just wanted to remind you, if you haven't started already, that uh, it'd be a good time to press record if you're not recording yet. I don't see it in the corner, but that doesn't mean much. Okay. Um, so we were established before Carlsbad was even a city, and we've been making an impact in this community for now almost 100 years, coming up on that century mark. And we're governed by a board of volunteers, and um, several of them are on the call today, um, and you'll get to hear from them because, like, as I mentioned, we'll be going around and doing introductions, but um, A.J. Vandeven from CalSense, Adam Jacobs from Fortis Fitness, Shafiq Rohana from Wells Fargo, Josh Mazur from Upstream Consulting and Don Sando from Strategic Results Group, I believe, are all on the call with us today. And this is a picture of our board from um, before COVID. Uh, so this is uh, now a tiny bit dated because we weren't able to host this same event in person like we typically do, but um, that's a group of them. They are real people. They do show up to events. And if you are going to show up to events, you'll get a chance to meet some of them. So we are a small but mighty staff, um, and several of these people are on the call today. Our newest staff member isn't on this list, but you'll meet her today as well. But uh, we get a lot done, um, and if you engage with us in any way, shape, or form, you'll get to know these people really well. So why do people join a chamber? Well, everybody joins for their own reason, but we know that we can kind of break it down. The typical reasons people join are to make connections, gain information, gain exposure. So let me talk about now what benefits we provide you in these different arenas. So first of all, making connections. Um, the chamber helps make connections to elected officials, to policymakers, 
business leaders, educational leaders. We are the voice on key business issues for the local and regional uh, community. And then some people joined to leave a community legacy. And so we are very connected to all these different arenas and love helping our members get connected to folks who uh, need to be in these different arenas. So how do we do that? How do we make connections? Well, two primary ways, our events and our committees. So what are some of our events? You saw that big picture of my board of directors. That was from our um, CBAT Awards in 2019. The CBAT Awards is a large event where we uh, have usually about 300 people in attendance and we honor uh, companies, educational leaders, community leaders in all these different arenas and we come together to celebrate all that's great about our community. And then the event we just had online last week, which normally, of course, when it's not COVID, we would have in person, is our State of the Community Luncheon. So in August of 2019, we had over 500 of people who are engaged in this community together. Again, from the education community, the business community, the nonprofit community, government leadership, and more nonprofit leadership, everybody coming together through our large events. It is the largest you know, networking event in North County, our State of the Community Luncheon is. This year, of course, because of COVID, we had to, uh, we had to reverse track and put it um, on Zoom. And so a little different experience, but um, it is what it is. We'll be back soon, hopefully. But then another way we help connect is through our committees. And we have 10 excellent committees at the Chamber of Commerce. And what we're gonna do right now is uh, I'm gonna introduce folks who are with us. who are gonna share uh, briefly about their committee, what their committee does and, and why they're involved in that. So as I, we're going alphabetically guys, so you can kind of you know, be ready when it's your turn to unmute yourself and share. But our first committee is our ambassador committee. And I'm gonna ask Lucy if she could unmute herself and share. Hi everybody, I'm Lucy Kelleher. Um, can you hear me, Brett? I can, and Kathy, if you could unspotlight me and go ahead and get, there we go. Um, well, you don't need to spotlight me, you can spotlight the picture. <laughs> But I'm Lucy Kelleher. I am the chair of the ambassador committee. And I just thought I would read to you our mission, uh, which is to intentionally assist prospective members, new members, and new employees of existing members to swiftly acclimate themselves to the networking, training, and other advantages we have here at the Chamber of Commerce. We are considered the goodwill arm of the chamber and each highly visible ambassador makes a commitment to build lasting relationships with the membership, especially new members, and to listen and respond to member needs, questions, and concerns. Uh, we are a conduit for communication between the chamber and its members, and we ensure a committed, loyal chamber membership base. What does that mean? We love to meet new chamber member businesses and help support them in whatever way we can. We attend ribbon cuttings, we do lots of one-on-ones. We are uh, just there to help out. We are the fun committee and uh, we would love to have you join us on the second Wednesday of the month from 7.30 to 8.30, currently on Zoom. Thanks so much. Thank you, Lucy, appreciate that. Next, um, if Don Sando could unmute himself for the Business Resource Committee. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Don Sando. Uh, with a chair of the Business Resource Committee. And our mission is really uh, four things that we focus on, uh, building genuine relationships, uh, teaching sound business skills, uh, increasing member visibility, and sharing referrals. So uh, we have our monthly meeting is the first Tuesday of the month, 7.30, uh, and 7.30 to 8.30. And we always uh, usually have a speaker, so it's usually a uh, it's always a chamber member, sometimes a B BRC committee member, uh, who will address a topic of interest for the rest of the uh, committee. So that's how we accomplish two things, which is teaching business skills and increasing uh, member visibility. So Don Sando with the uh, Business Resource Committee. 
Thank you, Don. Next, if we could have Adam Jacobs uh, unmute himself, talk about the Carlsbad Young Professionals. Good, I guess almost afternoon, everyone. I'm Adam Jacobs. I'm the chair of the Carlsbad Young Professional Group here, part of the chamber. Uh, and basically we are the youth outreach team. Um, so we do a lot of uh, fun events where we have typically a one hour uh, experience and whether that's going to a trampoline park, doing wine tasting, doing a sweat working workout, and that, or uh, recently we did an eco tour of one of the local uh, aquaponic um, companies in the area, which was very, very interesting. We also have a piece that we do for um, philanthropy, where we wrap some presents for underprivileged uh, youth in the area. Um, and then we do some networking as well. We meet the, set, the fourth Tuesday of every month at 1130 for our steering committee meeting. And basically that's part of planning for our, um, our event. And the one thing that we'd like to really remind everyone is if your company is a member of the chamber, that means all of your employees have access to the chamber and all of the events, including your younger employees that can come to our CYP event. So they don't need to be individual members. Your company takes care of that for them. So if you have any questions or anything, let me know or Kathleen, who's our liaison and looking forward to meeting you all in person one day. Thank you, Adam, appreciate that. And that's a great point. Um, all, you know, if you see any of these committees that you think might be a good fit for uh, a staff member or our team, somebody who's part of your team, you know, uh, don't just look at it through a lens of yourself. Uh, we know everybody's time is stretched, but um, if, for anybody who's part of your company, they are eligible to participate in these various events. So that's a great point. Um, Carolyn, if you could unmute yourself and share a little bit about the education committee. Good morning. I think it's morning. Anyway, <laughs> um, the Education Committee meets on the fourth Wednesday of the months of September and October and sometimes November, depending on the calendar, and then January through May. We are not, we're dark in the summer because the uh, educators are off school. Our goals are to enhance the educational experience by linking academics, business, and community, to promote real world learning by encouraging communication between schools and businesses, to support partnerships between educational institutions of all types and a wide variety of businesses and to encourage and celebrate educational excellence in our schools. We really um, have an impact on the community because our committee tries to and works very hard to get an open dialogue happening between the schools and what they are doing as far as curriculum and teaching the future workforce of the country and businesses who have who know what they're going to need in the future and need to make sure that they get that kind of workforce prepared for the future. So it's an important dialogue in terms of business and education understanding the real world and what is going to be needed for our students to be productive citizens in the future. We also tackle um, very tough issues that are very important to all of us uh, in January, DA Summer Stefan came and talked about human trafficking. And if you've been watching NBC7, you've seen that they did an entire investigative report for the last year and a half on stolen, which is all about human trafficking. Every school district practically in the county has reported human trafficking issues. So it's a really important issue to talk about between both business, parents, and schools. And then we're also... Um, tackling maybe an issue about racism and how we can prevent that from happening. But we really, we really are trying to make business and education better. Again, we meet the fourth Wednesday of the month at 730. And I think you would really enjoy our committee. Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah, there was some great content uh, last year. And, and I, I don't think you mentioned, but I mean, usually the committee will go maybe oh, right. go, go visit yeah. in uh, different businesses in the community. And we visited TaylorMade Golf and we were set up to go to GIA. No, we did go to GIA and we were yep. set up to go to Walmart Labs. And I mean, just yep. a great way for the educators to see real and business. Every, every committee we have a, a business for breakfast and a school for breakfast. So both report, our business for breakfast can be the business that is sponsoring us or, or 
hosting us for that morning, but we've visited so many wonderful companies where businesses learn about what they're doing as well as the schools. And it's been a very educational moment for both businesses and schools. And especially learning about what programs the schools have in place because we've heard about some marvelous school programs as well. Perfect, thank you so much. And for Sorry. those that have just been joining in the last few minutes, um, right now we're, we're kind of going through and introducing you to some of our committee, or all of our committees, and, and just talking about what a chamber is and how you can benefit from a chamber, but we will get to the point where all of you are gonna introduce yourselves as well. So thanks for joining in. Our next committee is our Government Affairs Committee, and I believe Teresa Costa might be with us. Teresa, are you? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, good. So I am proud to be the co-chair of the Government Affairs Committee. This is such an important committee for informing government decision makers about business perspectives and giving input. So at every meeting, which is the first Wednesday of every month, our next one is next uh, week, September 2nd, we go through important legislation that's being considered and we decide whether we want to take a position on it and recommend that position to the board. The board will then send a letter or maybe show up and testify on behalf of the local business community. So it's so important. The other thing we really work on doing is building relationships with these decision makers by bringing them into our meetings to speak to us and giving us a chance to do a Q&A with them and ask them questions and share our perspectives. So it's a great committee. It's kind of a powerhouse of a committee please join us our next meeting we will be going through some of the top ballot measures that might be confusing and we've got a very neutral speaker who's going to come speak to us just like here's the facts here's what uh, is going to be on the ballot so that you can be a better a more informed voter so come join us rsvp on the website we look forward to having you thanks thanks teresa and we are uh government affairs of course is a virtual meeting right all of these are virtual meetings at the moment so just so we don't confuse anybody, but yeah. So it's super easy if you've never tried one of these committees, it's a great time to test drive one because you can do it from your home, your office, wherever it is that you're working, you know, you don't have to leave. You can just jump on the Zoom meeting, try it out and, and see how you like it. And then, uh, you know, if, if it resonates with you, then, you know, become a regular. Um, the next committee, AJ is here to chat with us about the Green Business Committee, which I'm gonna have to give them their quick shout out. The Green Business Committee was our committee of the year for 2019. So this is a picture of them uh, receiving that award. So there you go. Hey, AJ. I guess, I guess I need to unmute. Thanks, Brett. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, the Green Business Committee promotes, supports, and educates chamber members on the appropriate balance between economic, environmental, and social aspects of the community to ensure sustainability for current and future generations. That's our mission. Sounds kind of boring. But we do a lot of really cool stuff. So we do two large annual events. Uh, the first is an eco tour in fall, where we visit local businesses who have adopted sustainable best practices throughout their companies. Uh, we visited places like the San Diego Food Bank, Viasat, Legoland, Zusa, Pacific Ridge School, and Pine Park Community Garden. Uh, the second event we do is the Green Business Expo. Generally falls in April to coincide with Earth Day. And the, the event hosts panel discussions with industry and thought leaders on implementing sustainable practices. Additionally, it's an opportunity for local businesses to showcase their commitment to sustainability in the form of a trade show. Although this year's event had to be rescheduled due to COVID, last year's was hosted at the flower fields and had a phenomenal turnout, especially because we combined it with the CBAD happy hour so people could walk around, look at the various businesses that were there with booths and have a drink in their hand. Besides those large objectives, we also have an educational component where we invite members to speak to the committee about areas of sustainability they're directly involved in. For example, we've had presentations on electric vehicles, water conservation, benefits of daylight within the workplace, and how to become a certified green business through the California Green Business Network. If you're a business that is involved in sustainability or wants to become more sustainable, it's a great opportunity to meet other like-minded businesses and like-minded people and give back to the community. Uh, for those who are interested in attending, we meet monthly on the second Tuesday of the month at 7.30 in the morning. Perfect. Thank you, AJ. Appreciate that. Um, and then, Carolyn, we're bringing you back for an encore for performance to talk about the, mili uh, excuse me, the membership committee. So the Carlsbad membership committee is um, a wonderful committee that is designed to reach out to our members to help them get more out of their membership, but also just to reach out, especially now and during COVID, 
we're reaching out just to see how they're doing, what we can do to help, how we can be a resource for them, what, what issues they might have and where we can help. And so many people have so appreciated uh, our calls, our reaching out and saying, just we care. Um, and just knowing that someone else is there and somebody else really is on their side. It's been uh, very rewarding. We meet the fourth Wednesday of every month at 1130. That Wednesday is really busy, but <laughs> anyway. Um, and um, we also go and visit when, before COVID happened, we actually went to offices and visited and uh, personally shook hands and welcomed them into the chamber if they were new, um, just talked to them about their business and what they, you know, what we could do to help. So it, if you want a rewarding experience, this is the committee. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Yes, and um, I would agree. If, you, if, if part of your business model is to get out there and actually meet people face-to-face, -face, the membership committee is phenomenal. Again, speaking from a, stand, uh, a, a standpoint of pre-COVID and hopefully soon to be post-COVID, but um, uh, we really appreciate that committee and all, it out, all the outreach it does. Um, next, we have one of our newest committees, the Military Affairs Committee, and if Lori could unmute herself and share with us about this new committee. committee. Yes, as Brett said, the Military Affairs Committee just started this year with 58,000 troops in our backyard here in Oceanside. It just made sense. We were made to establish and maintain a strong working relationship with the entire leadership at the Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton, and of course, all of the men and women of the Armed Forces. Our purpose is to focus on meaningful partnerships with active duty, retired military, and of course the entire veteran community as a whole. At the chamber, we were looking to expand our outreach and the support provided by the local businesses, as well as the military to promote mutual beneficial opportunities. That way it'll encourage the patronizing of the local business to the military community. This committee really is a, um, I'm going to say networking type committee. It's for us to be able to have the generals, the colonels, the um, different services that are on Camp Pendleton come and visit us via Zoom or in, when we get back to person to tell us what's going on in Camp Pendleton. It keeps us informed while being able to help them to see what we do. So if you're interested or have anybody in your network who is interested in the military. It's a really, really good way to come out and get to know what Camp Pendleton and our neighbors are doing. As Brett said, we meet on the fourth Friday of every month and we are a new committee. We're looking forward to seeing you. Thanks, Lori. Appreciate it. Appreciate what you do at Veterans Association as well. Um, next, we have our Ready Carlsbad Business Alliance. And if Mr. David Harrison probably one of the busiest guys in Carlsbad right now. If he could unmute himself. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Brett, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Great. Uh, well, welcome, and it's a pleasure to be able to address the group. My name is David Harrison, and I'm the co-chair of the Ready Carlsbad Business Alliance. Uh, my uh, partner co-chair is Bob Welty, uh, Carlsbad resident and uh, an individual with long time experience in emergency preparedness, preparedness technologies, regionalization uh, of those technologies, uh, all in with the mission of trying to improve our community's preparedness for these natural and man-made disasters. And I also uh, am the city of Carlsbad's assistant uh, director of emergency services. So yes, we've been quite involved with uh, COVID-19 and, and of course, preparing for the other things that impact our community. I remember in April, we had some significant uh, rain and, and localized flooding. Uh, we, we've had uh, the, 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 the lawful protests that we've been, demonstrations that we've been uh, uh, monitoring and make sure they're in, occurring in a safe manner. Uh, we're very focused on preparing for Wadalam fire season. But the mission of the Ready Carlsbad Business Alliance is really to uh, help businesses prepare for these natural and or man-made disasters and to assist with employees in their preparation uh, for the same. And also when, if and when uh, the opportunity permits, if uh, Carlsbad has been impacted by these disasters like we have been over the years, uh, perhaps most uh, memorably, the 2014 Poinsettia fire is to come together and see if there's a way that we can contribute to community recovery 
That was certainly the case in 2014, and uh, there's uh, current uh, planning going on for what that might look like uh, during COVID-19. So it's really, the mission is to prepare businesses, employees, and to be prepared to assist with community uh, recovery when necessary. We do these, uh, achieve these goals, uh, work towards uh, the achievement of these goals through uh, symposiums, educational symposiums, and our uh, monthly committee meetings. Over the 10 or 11 years of uh, Ready Carlsbad's existence, we've held uh, probably close to 25 symposiums. And uh, those symposiums have covered all sorts of preparedness topics from active shooter down the alphabet to wildland fire and even Zika virus, if you remember that from a couple years ago. Um, we've had strong support from the business community for those uh, symposiums. This past year, uh, with uh, Brett's uh, uh, support and leadership, we partnered with another preparedness organization. That organization is called InfraGuard San Diego. And uh, through that partnership, we, uh, with Ready Carlsbad and Chamber of Support, sponsored the region's first earthquake symposium at uh, Qualcomm's Jacobs Hall, very well attended. We brought in subject matter experts from across the Western states to present at that. And just yesterday, uh, the uh, National InfraGuard chapter presented awards for 20 uh, this past year. And uh, InfraGuard San Diego, once again, with RCBA's uh, sponsorship support and other planning support, uh, was awarded the uh, 2020 uh, National Community Outreach Award. So we appreciate uh, Brett and the Chamber's support uh, for all that and the uh, Ready Carlsbad members that uh, made that uh, happen. Uh, in terms of other impact, I talked a little bit about Car Ready Carlsbad impact. I talked a little bit about that when I mentioned uh, the 2014 Poinsettia fire. Uh, the Carlsbad Chamber, Ready Carlsbad, uh, uh, solicited uh, local businesses for donations, and those donations were uh, distributed to the 71 families that had been impacted by the Poinsettia fire, either directly by the fire or due to uh, the atmospherics as, uh, associated with ash and debris and, or cleanup and those types of things. Incredible impact uh, for our community. And we did that in literally a matter of a few weeks and not in months like it often takes other agencies to provide that type of support. Um, So I guess I'll wrap up by saying once again, my name is David Harrison and the Ready Carlsbad Business Alliance meets on the second Friday of the month at 7.30, currently via Zoom, but we look forward to the opportunity to meeting in person uh, as well in the future. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, and I will uh, share, he touched on, you know, our, our assistance from through Ready Carlsbad trying to help in recovery. And so you're going to be seeing next week as we launch um, a, a economic stimulus program aimed at helping our restaurants and retailers here locally in Carlsbad, who of course are some of the hardest hit. Um, there's others that have been hard hit as well, but um, we are doing a program to benefit them that will be a gift card program. And so when individuals purchase like a $25 gift card to a local restaurant or retail, they're gonna get an additional $5 bonus gift card free. If you purchase a $40 uh, gift card to one of these restaurants or retailers, you'll get an additional $10 gift card for free. And so through our Ready Carlsbad Business Alliance, the Chamber is um, working with um, other local um, jurisdictions, the city itself, as well as the Carlsbad Village Association, Visit Carlsbad. And we're going to be going to our local businesses to try and get support for this program so that we can have a nice, you know, typically September is the end of tourism tourism season, you know, when Labor Day hits, but so we're trying to stimulate some local dollars to these restaurants and retailers that, you know, did not have the usual uh, tourism season that they're accustomed to and that helps carry them throughout the year. So keep your eyes out for that and uh, really appreciate the Ready Carlsbad Business Alliance and their leadership in helping prepare and recover. So thank you, David, so much. Next, um, I'd like to bring in Mr. John Beethan from Heard Not Seen Media to talk about the Technology Committee. Oh, I thought maybe Teresa was gonna do that. Nope, it's you. Go ahead, John, go ahead. Oh, I, I love to be put on the spot. Hi, my name is John Beethan. Actually, my business is Heard Not Seen Media, a podcasting company, new at the chamber, although I've been around the chamber for a number of years. 
So the, the TAC committee, Technology Advisory Committee, actually does what it says, which is we advise Carlsbad Chamber members on um, good practices, technology that would be useful for their business. Anything else you'd like to add, Teresa? I would say that we're always looking for collaborations and we recently did our last meeting on the digital divide and what that is and how people are working to help make sure that kids who are distance learning right now have access to not just the hardware like a, a computer but also the hotspots or the connectivity that they need that was an excellent presentation by one of our chamber me members wade ashbrenner and this next meeting we're going to have david harrison from a different committee come over to our committee and chat with us about uh, what we need to know as chamber members and technology uh, interested chamber members to to know what the city is doing and things that we might be able to do to help out. So it, please come join us. We're always very receptive. I know it seems intimidating. Technology sounds like, oh, it's just for tech experts, but it's really not. It's for any chamber member. We're all using technology, obviously. We're on a Zoom call right now, and we invite you to come join us. Our next meeting is on the third Wednesday. They're always the third Wednesday of every month. So third come on Tuesday. Out. Tuesday. Oh, sorry, Tuesday. I'm sorry. I confused it. You're with on so, so many committees. <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> Thank you, though. You're yeah. welcome. So I also want to mention also, make sure you guys check out the um, webinar feed on the carlsbad.org site, because I co-chair also BRC with Don Sando, and I'm the secretary right now with the TAC committee. So in both those committees, we produce videos, and I'm sure other committees do as well. But anything we do, we basically record the video presentation. And uh, we were really happy a couple of months ago to actually do a really nice presentation on uh, basically how to work with interns. You want to talk about that, Teresa? Because you kind of brought Ram into that one, didn't you? Yeah, well, I don't want to take up too much time, but just to say yeah. we always have fascinating topics. Ram's session was our speaker. He's developing an app. He's a chamber member. Obviously, all of our speakers are. And he had 30 interns who helped beta test his app. And it was really cool hearing about how he set up the internship program, what he did along the way to make sure they were meeting their milestones, their certificate, and the letters of recommendation at the end. He had tons of best so I would encourage you, if you're thinking about that kind of a program, his video, it was really, really a great presentation. And if you have a great topic that you'd like to present on, come check out our committee a couple times and then let us know that you want to present and we'll give you the spotlight as well. Thank, Thank you. you guys. That was great. Thanks, Brad. You're welcome. And uh, I appreciate John saying, um, you know, check out our website, carlsbad.org. Um, right on the top navigation, you'll see the webinars, or if you come down the page a little bit, you'll see the link also to our webinar page. And as uh, John mentioned, everything that we are doing right now is getting recorded and shared. So you can come back and cycle back and check it out later when it's convenient for you if you can't make the exact meeting or webinar or session that is hosting it. So thank you for sharing that, John. So let me, and on that topic, let me share about um, information because we've talked about our committees and connections, but there's a lot of different information that the chamber is involved in bringing to you. We bring you resources on business issues and also programs to help you operate your business. And so how do we do it? Well, of course, committees, I'm going to talk about in a second, even though we've been talking about them already, but we have a lot of different forums. Right now, everything is basically a webinar because of COVID, but when we're not in COVID season, um, Tech Bytes, Lunch and Learns, Chamber Net Tens, Symposiums you heard about as well from David Harrison, all kinds of different formats and forums. All of these formats are right now funneling into the webinar mechanism, but we have a lot of different um, forums when we're not having to be virtual all the time. And then, you heard about committees, you know, business resource committee, the technology committee, government affairs, and many others, education. Many of these committees, uh, the green business, they have phenomenal um, informational topics and presentations every month. And as I said, right now we're recording everything. So it's great, but so, so much information that we have for you. You know, when, um, when COVID first hit, we did a lot of workshops and webinars right away on the PPP loan program and 
all the different resources that were out there for businesses that needed help right away. Uh, we did workshops on, um, you know, deferring your property taxes for those who needed that. I and mean, we were everywhere all the time. And that is what we want to be is a great informational resource to you. But most of the people come to the Chamber of Commerce for marketing purposes. So let's talk about how the Chamber helps you get exposure. I'm going to talk about it in two different ways, networking and visibility. So first networking, there are a lot of networking opportunities at the Chamber of Commerce. And it's actually one of our strong points here. Um, we have our CBAD happy hours during normal times. These happy hours uh, rotate around to different host sites and these uh, hosts throughout the community. You know, these, these would be, of course, as as the name indicates, happy hours are evening mixers. So from 5 to 7 p.m. and at different locations. And then our first Friday breakfasts are um, the first Friday of the month. When it's not COVID, we typically are meeting at the Westin Hotel in Carlsbad, and we have a fabulous guest speaker who would come in and be highlighted. But it's also what I love about the first Friday breakfast is that it's structured networking at your tables. So if you're brand new and you're just trying to meet people and you know going into a big group of strangers isn't your thing, the first Friday breakfast is great because you're gonna be seated at a group, at a table with folks that are different professions than yourself and you're gonna have a structure with a facilitator to help you um, get to introduce yourself and share who you are and what you do. And then we have Coffee Connections. Coffee Connections are wonderful, um, very low key, uh, great way to get to meet people and go a little bit deeper. Um, those are regularly held throughout the month. Um, I think we're doing a couple Fridays a month right now. And then chamber plates also very low key. Those are typically at lunchtime. Different members actually host those and they're just a fantastic way to get to meet people on a little bit deeper level. You heard about our young professional group from Adam. So they have their own business mixers that are excellent and they're open to all young professionals. And he's generous to give those of us who are not quite in that demographic, the young at heart label. So if you wanna crash and get to know them, he's pretty open to that. We talked about the committees and all the great resources they provide, but they're also a great networking place too, um, as you get to know people. But I also wanna highlight a, a group we have here at the chamber called NetForce. NetForce is a lead generation group and you might be familiar with some of the ones that exist out there, things like BNI or Latip or some of the others that exist. Um, NetForce is a chamber version of those. And I say a chamber version because it's, it's a little different, but it has that structure where you're part of a, a committed group that meets every single week and it comes together um, here at the chamber office, of course, right now via Zoom. But you meet every week, but some of the if you have experience with some of those other groups, and I'm not here to say anything negative about them, but you might have found that they can be a bit costly, a bit pricey, um, and a bit draconian in some of their policies. So this is a, a, a chamber version of those. And so you have to be a member of our chamber, but if you're a member, it's only $100 a year. So it's a very low price of entry. And um, they, they do meet weekly. They meet for an hour. We have a group on Thursdays and a group on Mondays. And uh, Carolyn, I think you're part of the Monday group. I would love for you to share some of the different professions that you guys might be interested in that you know you have openings for. Yeah, um, actually we, we consider ourselves a referral group hmm. as opposed to a leads group because when we refer, we're almost certain that that person really needs the, that help from that person and it really works. So even during COVID, we've had really great success in the Monday group with referring each other and getting some real effort made with people to, to uh, increase their business or at least get business. So in our NetForce uh, group on Mondays, we could use a financial planner, uh, an, a state attorney, a family law attorney, a business attorney, uh, a website designer, a graphic designer, any professional uh, person like a doctor, a chiropractor, a dentist, um, uh, the uh, service organizations. So 
uh, HR a professional, uh, organizational professional, um, any kind of trade such as plumbers, contractors, ar architects, um, any number of those um, types of people would be great for our group. And we really love it because we are friends and we are, we know each other so well, we know that when we refer someone in the group, that person is really going to do and follow up and do what needs to be done. And so we have every confidence and, tr confidence and trust in the people that we know. So it's a great group. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. And that's a great clarification, a referral group uh, versus a leads group. Uh, I love that. Um, and we're highlighting the Monday group, our Thursday group's a little bigger, so it has a little less um, spots for new members, but our, our, I think people are a little hesitant to join a Monday morning group. So it's got some great openings, which means opportunity for you. So I encourage you to check it out. Um, so that's, and that's a fantastic group. Um, and then and also- meet, Excuse oh, me ahead. one second. We, we meet later on Monday, just because it is Monday. So we start at 7.45 to give everybody a little bit of a chance not to wake up quite so early. It nice. works better. <laughs> Good, point. Good point. Most everything around the chamber starts at 7.30 in the morning. That was an adjustment for me when I first came over to the Carlsbad Chamber. It's like, why does everything start so early? But it's good because you start early and then you can get on with your, your business, which is your main thing. So, um, but they start at 7.45 for the Monday morning NetForce group. That's a great clarification. And then the last thing I'll mention about networking is we love doing one-on-one. -on -one. So as we get to know you more, <clears throat> then we help weave people together and we love doing it um so the more we get to know you the easier that is of course as we get to know what your target is what your goals are from being part of the chamber and um and we look forward to that opportunity to weave you together with other people with other opportunities and <clears throat> along those lines kathleen's on our call she's going to introduce herself soon when when you all get a chance to and um, for those of you that are newer members and have not yet done a one-on-one -on -one membership um, onboarding meeting, Kathleen would love to set one up with you. It's about 20 to 30 minutes. And like I said, she's gonna get to know you, find out all about your business, and then show you some ways to beef up your presence online. And I know some of you have already done it, which is great. And uh, we look forward to doing that with the rest of you that haven't yet. So. We love networking. And then there's some great low cost and no cost, I'm sorry, no cost ways that you can get some visibility through the chamber. So we have a brochure rack when it's not COVID time that people come into our office and scour through all the time. So bring us your brochures. It's free to put a brochure in there if you're a member of our chamber. And if you have a PR announcement, we love to share stuff about our members. So P some of the PR announcements you send us might end up in our uh, Carlsbad Business Journal. Some might end up on our social media, but we love to brag about you and share your good news. So get it to us. And you're going to meet Carolina in a few minutes and, and she, she'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, ribbon cuttings. There's a lot of great reasons to do a ribbon cutting and we're ready. We're ready to re-engage with ribbon cuttings. Yes, we will follow you know all the social health guidelines right now. So when we get together to cut that, that ribbon, we'll mask up and before we cut ribbon, we'll social distance and physical distance and we'll do all those appropriate things. But ribbon cuttings are fantastic because there's about four different ways that you get um, exposure from doing a ribbon cutting. Just the notice that we email out to the city officials, our board of directors, our ambassadors and our membership committee, even if they can't all come, a notice goes out talking about your business and the date and time of your ribbon cutting. And then of course, when we actually hold the ribbon cutting, some of them will show up and give you a chance to share about your company with all those who are able to make it, uh, give some tours if that's applicable. Um, and then after the ribbon cutting, we're gonna put those pictures of your business onto our social media and share about you and who you are. So, and that's all free. That's just a benefit of being a member of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. So we highly encourage you to uh, schedule a ribbon cutting with us. And what are some legitimate reasons for scheduling a ribbon cutting? Well, you're a brand new business. You're a new business that has a new location. You're under new management. You're celebrating a significant anniversary as a company, five years, 10 years, et cetera, et cetera. Or just the fact that you finally were, for the first time, decided to join the chamber. That's a great reason to do a ribbon cutting. So a lot of legit reasons and we love doing them. So we highly encourage that. And there's uh, your, your main cost 
for a ribbon cutting is putting some snacks out for those who attend. So if you can handle that, then you're good to go. Um, and then there's some low cost opportunities you have as a member of the chamber as well. So the Carlsbad Business Journal, you're gonna meet Daryl in a couple minutes and he's gonna share with you uh, some of the great things about the Business Journal um, and some of our other publications we have he'll talk about. But our Business Journal is highly respected, well received in the community. We print 8,000 copies a month and get them out there. Um, uh, a few thousand of those go out in the mail and then the rest go out through distribution centers and uh, Daryl would, would be your guy to talk about how affordable it is to get your message out through the Business Journal. Um, and then some of our folks who were, uh, I think Teresa and some of the others mentioned how you could conduct a seminar, that your seminar might start out at a committee level, and then many times the committees will tell us, hey, this content was excellent. We should share this with the whole membership. And then you could host a, um, a webinar, you know, a, a tech bite or whatever the case might be, uh, with the chamber. So you have an expertise from an educational value that you think would be great for the membership. Now, of course, it can't just be a glorified commercial for yourself. It's got to be educational. But if you uh, have something, let us know. You Once we get back to normal happy hours, you could host one. Um, there's no cost to host it, but you do provide the catering for those the attendees. So, you know, finger food for 80 to 100 people. Um, but that's a great way to get people to your facility and to show it off and to talk about it at the, um, at the happy hour. You can become an event sponsor. Right now we're even taking sponsors for our virtual happy hours, very low dollar chance. If you wanna be a virtual sponsor, you know that gives you a few minutes to uh, talk to the whole group at our virtual happy hours. And, um, you know, so consider that. But so we have sponsorship opportunities from $150, you know, to $20,000. So if you have the, um, you're looking for different ways to gain visibility for your company, we have a whole variety of opportunities for you and I'd love to chat with you. So we've talked a lot about committees. We've talked about different things, networking, where you can show up, but there is a lot of value that you receive from being a member of the Chamber of Commerce, even if you don't have time to show up and attend things. And so I wanna take a moment to share some of that with you because we don't want you to leave thinking, oh my gosh, I gotta attend this and attend that and attend this. No, you actually don't. You don't have to attend anything. And we still appreciate you and we're still gonna refer you. So let's talk about this for a minute. The first thing I wanna encourage you to do is to get your membership plaque visible. Once people are starting to come back to your office and your, your place of business, maybe they already have, but um, get your membership plaque visible somewhere where people coming to you can see it. Because when people know that you are a member of your local chamber of commerce, a lot of positive things happen. You have a 49% increase in your consumer favorability rating, a 73% increase in your consumer awareness, a 68% increase in your local reputation and an 80% increase in the likelihood that consumers would patronize your business in the future. Here's the basic fact. People like doing business with businesses that are committed and connected to the local community. They just do. Your credibility goes up when people realize that you're a member of your local chamber of commerce. That has nothing to do with whether you show up to network, whether you join a committee, any of that. Just be a member in good standing and your credibility increases. And as a member, we're gonna give you referrals because people come to us all the time looking for you. They call in, they email us. When it's not COVID, they walk in. Um, we have people looking for you all the time. I've shared this story a few times at different orientation meetings and this goes back to when I was with my previous chamber in Vista and one time I was, it was in the afternoon, everybody else on staff was gone for some reason and so I was managing the phones, which is not a typical thing, but um, somebody called in and um, first of all, you should know that people call chambers of commerce for all kinds of very unique and uh, interesting, you could even say weird um, things and that's okay, we're used to it. Um, we're kind of a 411, you know, informational service for the community and we love serving 
in that role. But there's a handful or there's a large percentage of things that people call a chamber for that will literally get online and look up the answer for them on Google and just share it, uh, to be honest. But this one day, uh, this, this lady called in and I could tell by her voice that she was older. And she said, um, I was wondering if you had a chamber member who did, I can't, I can't honestly remember what it was that she was looking for, but I did a quick search and we didn't. And I said, I apologize, we don't have a member that does that. Um, would you like me to do a local business search for you so that uh, you know, I can give you some names of companies that do do that? And her response was, oh no, that's okay. I can do that. I just wanted to know if there was a chamber member first. We get people contacting us all the time just like that. And we love sending them your way and referring them to you. So we also, have our business resource guide whether you take the time to attend an event or not you're going to be listed in our business resource guide we just uh, had a brand new publication that came out i think it was three weeks or a month ago um, and so uh, all of you who are members are in there and then your web listing your the day you join you're listed on our website and of course we know this is a, a 24 7 world sometimes people are looking for uh, resources at 11 p.m i've done it you've done it you know 5 a.m. I've done it. You've done it. So people go to our website. Our website gets thousands of visitors a month and the top two places that they visit are our business resource listing, you, and our event calendar. Those are the top two places that they visit. And so we get thousands of eyeballs every year going to find you. And then whether you have time to show up or not, we're advocating for you in the background. And what does that mean? It can mean a whole variety of things. I, I can't even tell you the width and breadth of things we've been doing um, for businesses since COVID hit. But uh, I'll tell you one just super um, unique one that came up literally yesterday. Uh, a member of ours, he has a training business and his trainings are hands-on in person. So they don't really work to go virtual. And so his business is down over 75% right now. And he said he was explaining that his business, um, many of his clients are from Mexico, Tijuana. And the problem is right now is that you can only cross the border if you're an essential worker. They're not letting people across. So he was looking to have a discussion with somebody to see how he could facilitate because many of his clients are in the essential worker space and they need this training that he provides to help them and they can't they can't get to this and do it so i was able to connect him with our local congressman and with his specialists on border crossings and immigration policy and the two of them are now in discussion about how to possibly make this happen so that kind of stuff we have connections in the background that we love working for you when you have need and i have a dozen more just since COVID hit but shortness of time i'm not going to go there but just know we love advocating for you you might not need our help for another 10 years but when you do we know how to navigate through and connect you to the right places and the right people so and we love doing that so what's the benefit to a community of a chamber of commerce we act as an economic catalyst a convener of civic leaders and a champion for the community you know i told you just briefly with our ready carlsbad business alliance how we are doing a new economic stimulus program to help our local businesses and our local economy. Um, that's just one little tiny way that we are an economic catalyst. There's dozens of ways. I shared with you about our, our big State of the Community Luncheon, as well as our CBAT Awards, where we convene leaders from all different uh, walks of life and professions, you know, from city government, nonprofits, education, business, of course, and uh, public safety. They all come together and convene through us and we love that happening. And then community champion. I mean, we run some of the biggest events in the country that champion our community. The Chamber is the organization that puts on the Carlsbad Village Fair, the largest one day street fair in the country, probably in the world. I'm just gonna say in the world till somebody proves me wrong. But uh, we bring together over 100,000 people who come to our downtown to visit over 900 vendors in, in a single day. And we do it twice a year. And that's just one tiny thing we do to champion our community. We're about to embark on a, on a, 
uh, campaign that's in collaboration. It's not our campaign in particular, but we're collaborating with um, Visit Carlsbad on a um, campaign called, oh, come on, what's it called? Um, Carl, uh, I forget what it's called, but you'll see it. It's starting mid-September. Um, oh, I remember, Carlsbad is calling. And it's all about encouraging people, you know, as we're getting back to, you know, some vacations, staycations or visiting, we're going to be promoting all the great things that make Carlsbad a phenomenal community to, uh, to visit, to shop, to dine, to vacation, to live, work and play. So we are a huge champion for the community. And our goal is to make an impact. I talked about how we convene everybody and they all all those different facets of the community, business, nonprofit, uh, public safety, government, and education come together through the chamber. And then our goal is to make an impact on all of them through what, who and what we are. And so we are very, um, we're very excited. Carlsbad is a regional resource to North County. It's not just about this city. You know, we are an economic engine that drives all of North County. We are the second highest tourism um, generator of funds in the entire county of San Diego. It's obviously, tourism's down right now, but in normal, it'll come back and we will be right there roaring away when it does. And so we want you to be part of our team and we want to be part of your team. We look for long-term relationships. You know, I often say some people join chambers, um, big game hunting. You know, they come in like, hey, I'm going to join the chamber and I'm going to get this big contract or that big contract. And they usually leave um, within a year or two. But the people who join who come with a farming mentality, they're going to come, they're going to take the time, they're going to develop some relationships, they're going to nurture those relationships, they're going to get a huge harvest down the road. So those are the kind of folks that um, we really want as part of us and we want to be part of you and it's going to be a very mutually beneficial relationship long term and along those lines i would love to ask lucy kelleher from keep them loyal to share um her experience as a chamber member over the years lucy if you could unmute yourself and kathy make sure i'm not spotlighted hi can you hear me yes okay well, hi, as Brett said, I'm uh, Lucy Keller. I'm the founder of Keep Them Loyal. And I've been a member of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce for over four years. And it was one of the best decisions I ever made as a business owner when I decided to finally join. Um, I have seen my business not only grow and prosper because of the opportunities that the chamber provided, but I've also been connected to so many different businesses I might never have been able to on my own. And though I'm a small business owner, um, the chamber supports and advocates for me and my business just like they would any of the larger uh, businesses and organizations that are members, which is phenomenal. And you don't necessarily see that at all chambers. Um, this chamber I have found brings together business, education, government, and military. So I've been able to connect and support other businesses while growing my own business. Um, in ways that I might not have on my own. Um, they are such strong advocates, not only for us chamber members, but for the Carlsbad community at large. And I know that my visibility has increased exponentially because of the opportunities that they've given me to showcase what my business has to offer. Um, there is a strong leadership here with the leadership and staff that are clearly invested in me and my business um, as a member. And now in times of COVID, um, and the pandemic and not being able to meet in person like we used to, the pivots that they have made have helped me stay connected with so many other chamber members, again, in ways that I would not have been able to previously. And it is the first organization that I've ever recommended business owners who are asking how to get connected and grow their business in Carlsbad and the surrounding areas. And I proudly have, I don't know if you can see this, Brett, can you see that? That is my chamber placard. Uh, <laughs> that I received. <laughs> I always have that with me and many times it's just in the background uh, when I'm doing, oh, I think I have a virtual background, don't I? Yeah. Right now, maybe you couldn't see it, but it's my uh, Carlsbad placard that I am a proud member of the chamber. So that's what I've got for you. 
Perfect. Thank you, Lucy, so much for taking the time. And so now what we want to do is meet you all. I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and I'm going to keep it for me on the um, gallery view. And I'm going to, I'm going to call you out as it lays out on my screen. So if you could just be kind of ready and then this is your 30 second intro to tell who you are, what you do, and, and then I'll keep us moving along um, so that uh, we do it timely. So I'm going to start with uh, AJ Vandeven. AJ Vandeven with CalSense. We contribute to sustainable future by providing water resource management re to government entities and other large entities to help them save water, save time, save money. I'm also a board of, on the board of directors of Ecolife Cons Conservation, another chamber member whose mission is to protect wildlife, natural resources, and the people who depend on them. Um, I'm also honored to be part of the chamber board of directors. AJ Vandeven, CalSense. Thank you, AJ. Uh, Carolyn B. Reinmiller. Hi, I'm Carolyn B. Reinmiller from Carolyn B. Reinmiller Public Relations. How much does your public know about your business? Do they know what you do? Do they know how well you do it? If they don't, they can't hire you. So for 38 years, I've been helping businesses to improve their bottom line through marketing, advertising, public relations, cause-related marketing, and special events PR. Carolyn B. Ryan Miller, Public Relations. Thank you, Carolyn. Kathleen McNary. Who, oh, me? <laughs> oh my gosh, good afternoon, everybody. Kathleen McNary, and I am the Director of Corporate and Member Relations here at the Carlsbad Chamber. And it is just awesome to see all of you guys. Um, and I look forward to getting to meet you in person if I haven't already as well um, in the future, who knows when. Uh, um, basically, what do I do? It's a little bit of everything. If there is anything that you um, need through the chamber, or just have a question or want to let us know what you're trying to accomplish, let me know. I am happy to schedule a time to speak with new members, current members, anybody who may just want it, more information about the chamber. And I posted the link to set a meeting with me in our chat box. So please feel free to copy and share that URL. Um, if you want to make a meeting, do it. If you think somebody's out there who wants to learn a little bit more, um, please invite them to use it. I'm happy to. And, and that's what I love to do is talk. So I'll stop now because I know I'll keep going. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. Kathy Steffen. Good morning. I am the Director of Fun at the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. And it has been such a great experience to be here and to direct fun your way. So we're constantly looking for new things and exciting things to do. And I do want to mention that on September 16th, we have Star in Your Own 17 Second Commercial. So if you want to learn how to talk about your 17 seconds, I recommend that you go to our website, carlsbad.org, and sign up for the 17 Second Commercial Training. And that's at 9.30 in the morning. Thank you, Kathy. Adam Jacobs. Now I can say good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Adam Jacobs, Fortis Fitness and Yoga Lux. We're a luxury yoga and fitness facility now open in our parking lot right outside of our building offering curbside classes. Yes, it's a big step for us. Thank you to the chamber and everyone who worked hard to get those permits uh, pushed through. And we also offer now virtual classes as well. So wherever you are, we can come to you with our Lux Anywhere membership. Uh, again, Adam Jacobs, Board of Fitness and Yoga Lux. Welcome to the chamber. Thank you, Adam. Lori, Bo Lori Booty. Hi, everybody. I'm Lori with the Veterans Association of North County. We're here to help all active duty and retired and military veterans of all forms. If you'd like to see Camp Pendleton, get to know Camp Pendleton. That's what we do here at Vance. We'll also have several times we'll take you on to Camp Pendleton. Our next one's going to be October 23rd. We're going to be doing that through a golf tournament. But anyway, if you're interested, look at advance.me and find out about us. Thank you, Laurie, for all that you do there for our veterans. David Harrison. Thank you, Brett. Uh, David Harrison, Assistant Director of Emergency Services for the City of Carlsbad. I'm a part of a terrific, terrific, as a community, we're really blessed to have such a, a smart, proactive leadership team which has uh, coordinated uh, the city's response not only to COVID-19, but to other public safety and community welfare programs. 
uh, so well. And so uh, I'm fortunate to be a part of that group. I am also a part of some other regional preparedness organizations. I mentioned InfraGuard a little bit ago. I uh, sit on the uh, San Diego County uh, Unified Disaster Council and uh, coordinate the Carl, City of Carlsbad's Community Emergency Response Team, Emergency Operation Center and some other things. But uh, really, uh, instead of talking about this, I just would encourage you to pay attention during September, which is National Preparedness Month, the Chamber's going to be uh, featuring preparedness in the Carlsbad Business Journal, understand the city's uh, messaging, public service messaging is going to talk about preparedness in September. And of course, a major focus has to be on community preparedness for wildland fires. We've seen the impacts of this on Northern California. And so I just encourage everyone to pay attention and to be prepared for this uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, David, for all you do to keep us safe and protected and locally. Michelle Amaranto. Good afternoon, can you guys hear me okay? Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Amaranto with BioLine of Oceanside. Um, I've met some of you in this group before and some of you might have met my husband, um, Armin Amaranto. We do uh, trauma and crime scene cleaning, hoarding, we do COVID-19 disinfection. So I think we're kind of a niche uh, business. So we are both, I'm speaking for both of us, uh, very excited to join the chamber. This is the first time that we've been able to do this. Um, so just looking forward to meeting everyone. I joined a, a committee and um, just thank you. So very interested in seeing how this group can, can help our new business. We just joined the chamber, I think about two weeks ago, and we were happy to uh, provide some water for the, the rally that was held at the um, Carlsbad Mall. So we're ready and eager to participate and meet everyone. So thank you. Thanks, Michelle. And that was very generous of you guys to bring the water to that rally. It was a hot day. And of we're course. It was. <laughs> that was great. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Josh Mazur. Hey, how's everybody doing? Josh Mazur, Upstream Consulting. Uh, I've got a background in software development. I spend most of my time these days in real estate development and uh, with some volunteer activities. Uh, I oversee some young school aged children as well. Uh, try to contribute to the community as needed. Uh, Josh Mazur. Thank you, Josh. Um, Shafiq Rohana. All right. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Chafik, I'm a district manager for Wells Fargo Bank. I'm a newer member of the board of directors. I'm part of a group of leaders that are responsible for a network of branches in North County. And really excited to be here and to support in anything that our small business needs uh, from a banking uh, perspective. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shafiq. Jonathan Go. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I am Jonathan Esquig, and uh, I own the uh, um, a premium ice cream truck. Looks like this. Can you see? And <laughs> we're supposed to be uh, joining the uh, Carlsbad um, uh, the fair, yeah, the street fair you have. But unfortunately, uh, uh, the, the the pandemic came in. So anyway, um, our services like uh, we we go our our business is uh, uh, selling premium ice cream, which is made locally here in National City. It's an old-fashioned ice cream, and uh, we were supposed to go to uh, big events here in. Uh, uh, San Diego County, like the uh, Miramar Air Show, the LGBT community uh, street fairs, but unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we were we were not able to end. Every uh, every event that we were supposed to do were canceled. But anyway, I'm 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 also a nurse. Uh, I'm an RN, and I work for the uh, state of California. We uh, make sure. Um, hospitals and uh, nursing homes and uh, dialysis uh, uh, facilities here in San Diego uh, are uh, doing their uh, uh, infection controls. So 
So um, we uh, we're 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 busy right now. So my I think my ice cream truck is not. Maybe until next year it will be uh, with uh, the Carlsbad uh, Street Fair and other uh, festivities around San Diego. I hope so. I hope they could uh, get the uh, vaccine and uh, get to people. So anyway. Good luck for you all, and uh, thank you for. I, I've been a member uh, before the pandemic this year. So uh, anyway, uh, I hope you stay uh, safe, everybody, and uh, uh, always wash your hands. <laughs> thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. And uh, just so you know, we haven't given up on our November street fair yet. We're still trying to lobby the county to uh, allow it to possibly happen. So don't give up hope on that one yet. But uh, yes, we're looking forward to um, there being a vaccine and, and more kind of return to what business used to be in 2019, et cetera. Mr. Don Sando. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Don Sando, Strategic Results Group. Uh, we work with business owners trying to uh, refine their marketing strategies so they can grow their top line revenues. And then we work with the leadership and organization on uh, improving their organizational efficiencies so that uh, goals get achieved. Uh, I'm also on the uh, board of directors, been on the board of directors of the chamber for uh, several years. Uh, Don Sando, Strategic Results Group. Thank you, Don. Mr. John Beethan. Thank you very much. My name is John Beethan. Um, I'm with my new company called Heard Not Seen Media, and we're a podcasting company. So we are typically hired by people and businesses that keep putting off starting their podcast, mainly because they think it's expensive or complicated. And what they really want is to actually start a podcast that's profitable to get their brand and message out there in a bigger way. So the other thing I wanted to let you know is that I also serve on two committees, again, the TAC committee with Teresa and also with Don Sando on business resource committee. John Beethan, Heard Not Seen Media. Thank you, John. And John's been very helpful to me as uh, we've had to pivot ourselves here at the chamber um, through the pandemic and just giving us guidance and resources and he's been fantastic, so thank you. Mr. Juan Velasco. There you go. Uh, can you guys hear me? Perfect. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Juan Velasco here. I'm grateful to be here today and meet all of you. Um, as a new member, I'm super excited to be part of the chamber. And I also just joined the ambassador committee. So excited about that as well. Um, I'm Juan Velasco with Scale My Profits as a uh, business coach. I work with business owners that are struggling to generate more clients, more sales, or just need an increase in profits. Um, and we help these business owners by finding $50,000 in 45 minutes without spending one extra dollar in advertising or marketing. Uh, Juan Velasco, Scale My Profits. Thank you guys for having me today. Thanks for Juan. Thank you, Juan. And thank you for being part of our uh, rally a couple of weeks ago and sharing your experience as a multiple business owner for the multiple businesses you have. Mr. Daryl Reitmeyer. All right. Thanks, Brett. Um, Daryl Reitmeyer here, Sales and Marketing Director for the Carlsbad Chamber. And as Brett mentioned earlier, we have a number of different products and opportunities for you as new members to join us with. One is our business journal, uh, monthly business journal. We actually produce a, 10 of those each year, a couple double month issues. Uh, we are just wrapping up our September issue. So if any of you are interested, please contact me about our October and our November, December issues coming up. And then um, in addition, we have our Carlsbad map uh, that has been very successful here in our community. Um, we print 15,000 copies of this. Uh, we are in the process of firming up all the ad reservations for that. It's done once a year. Um, it goes through July of 2021, so if anybody is interested in that, please let me know as soon as possible. And then our last feature is our, as Brett mentioned earlier, our business directory. Um, this was just published and printed um, about a month ago or so, and um, you do have advertising opportunities in there as well. So 
Daryl Reitmeyer with the Carlsbad Chamber. Thank you, Daryl. You know, and I should have mentioned earlier, you know, normally at these events, um, we do share, uh, you know, business cards so that you have each other's contact info. So maybe later you want to follow up with somebody that you heard from on the on the thing. And so obviously we, we can't share business cards, but you can't, some of you have probably already done it. But if you haven't yet, you might want to go into the chat and put your name, your organization in a, a convenient way to get a hold of you in case somebody wants to follow up with you later that you know, they heard from you here, etc. So I would encourage you to do that if you haven't already. Um, but next, um, Craig, North County Auctions. That's me. Uh, yeah, we help businesses uh, downsize. We help businesses move. Um, we sell, uh, we just uh, finished up a bottling equipment line about 10 o'clock today. So we got trucks coming in and going and money's flowing. And uh, we're making lemonade with these lemons. NorthCountyAuctions.com. Thank you, Craig. Teresa Acosta. Hello, I'm Teresa Acosta. I run a company called Acosta and Partners. We build public-private partnerships between technology companies and government agencies all over California. I've actually had the company for 10 years, even though I worked for several years as the VP of another consulting firm, which is when I became a member of the chamber. And uh, now I'm back to full time uh, running this business and very proud to be involved. I would say to all the new chamber members that one way to really get value out of the chamber is to get involved with the committees. I know that we bombarded you with a description of each committee and uh, I found so much uh, connection and support. It's really a great community of support to get involved with the committees that interest you. So of course, according to my business, technology and government are the two most relevant for me. And I've, I've volunteered a lot and now I'm a chair of both of them. So I'm really proud of getting involved and I encourage you to do the same. Again, Teresa Acosta, Acosta and Partners. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Carolina. Hi everyone, I'm Carolina Alvan Stoughton. I'm the Director of Communication and Engagement for the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. Uh, my role is to uh, tell the story of our chamber through the stories of its members. And I'm very happy and proud to do so through different channels as well as our award-winning publication every month, the Carlsbad Business Journal. Um, I am the editor and chief writer for um, that publication. I'm also the chamber liaison for two of our amazing committees, the Green Business Committee and the Ready Crosswalk Business Alliance. I put my contact information in the chat, so if um, you have a story to tell, send me an email. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. Yes, if you have a story to tell, she's very good at helping you tell it. So um, get in touch with her. And our newest admin staff member, Gabby Soberon. Hi, I'm Gabby Sobron. Um, I just started here about a month ago and I'm an administrative assistant. So I kind of help out in a lot of different areas here. And, and I look forward to meeting all of you, hopefully in person soon. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. And the screen has jumped around on me a little bit as people have turned their screen on and off. So um, Lucy, did we give you a chance already to introduce Keep Them Loyal? I know you've spoke a couple of times, but no, I haven't officially as Lucy as Keep Them Loyal, so I'll make it quick. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lucy Keller, founder of Keep Them Loyal. I'm a business development strategist, and I work with business owners on increasing their revenue through referrals and learning how to track and uh, leverage their contacts. Lucy Kelleher with Thank you, Lucy. Kate Jordan. Oh, can you guys hear me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate Jordan. I'm the director of sales at the new Ayers Hotel Vista Carlsbad. We're kind of right on the border where Carlsbad meets Vista meets San Marcos. So um, if you guys are in need of a staycation or anything uh, like that, we are open, officially open a, a little over a month ago on the 10th of July. It's a beautiful family owned and operated boutique hotel. Um, we have meeting space as well. So looking forward to having some happy hours and uh, chamber events at the hotel when things get a little closer back to normal, but I'm um, looking forward to meeting you all. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Kate. Congrats on that opening. Um, 
Like I said, we're down for doing ribbon cutting, so let us know. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> All right. And then, um, I, again, my screen has shifted a couple times, but I think I got everybody. Did I, did I miss anybody getting to introduce yourself? Raise your hand now if I missed you. Okay. So we have just a few minutes left, and we thank you for sticking with us. Kathy, the director of fun, is going to put us out in little break rooms just for a few minutes, just so you can get a flavor of how uh, some virtual networking works. Kathy, if you're ready, go for it.
Welcome back. Everybody's in the office today, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Is that a first? <laughs> no, we've been coming in pretty much almost every day. Oh, really? Oh, that's good to know. It's awesome. No birthdays? Not that I know of. Everybody should start filtering back. So now are you there full time all day, all day? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. That's good to know. Well, the office hours are Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Oh, that's what I meant. Okay. From 10 to 2. Welcome. Yeah, 10 to 2. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed a little little taste of some virtual networking. And um, for our next um, happy hour, which will be, I can't remember exact dates. 16th. September 16th. What we're doing is we're doing a uh, virtual speed networking and we're doing it with the Oceanside Chamber. So we're gonna give you an opportunity to get to do um, really quick meets with multiple people who you might not normally meet. And so, uh, and it's free. Um, it'll be for, I think it's for an hour. Is that right, Kathy? From like five to 6 p.m. on that September date that we just mentioned, the 16th. So you might wanna try that out and get a little chance to do some speed networking that day. And I appreciate all of you taking the time to learn more about us and how we can benefit you. We really appreciate you being members. Uh, I thank the committee chairs for taking their time to share about their committees today. Um, and we look forward to getting to know you all a little bit better, both, you know, virtually, but in person, eventually, um, we are, we love, you know, being connected to our members and it's killing us that, you know, we can't even do in person anything right now, because we're a high touch organization, um, both metaphorically and literally. So this, this thing is hard for us, but we look forward to returning. To where we can be, you know, a, a, li a literal, physical, high-touch organization again, with uh, handshakes and high fives and hugs and all that stuff. So soon, hopefully soon, we'll be past this. Um, but um, thank you today for joining us, and we're going to let you get back to the rest of your day now. And hopefully, we'll see you soon. So hey, thanks, Deb, real quick, from David, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and congratulations on State of the Community. That's so important to have done that during this environment. It really was inspirational and motivational. Thank you for that. Thank great you, David. Job. Appreciate that. All right, guys, have a great, great day. Thanks for taking your time today. Take care. Bye bye. I'd like to be hey, the Kathy? last one that leaves the party. Oh, hey, Kathy. Yes. Can you hear me? Um, mm -hmm. Just so you know, when somebody logs, oh, hello. Oh, there you are. I keep losing video real quick. Hold on. Oh, sure.